Yeah, I doubt that, uh, uh, I mean, you throw a name out there, Warren Buffett or somebody <laughs> like that. You, you know he's not using TurboTax. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Mach 1 Market Moment, where we provide financial information on topics such as investing, insurance, financial planning, and everything related to your money. A quick reminder that the hosts of the show are employees of Mach 1 Financial Group. This podcast is for informational purposes only, and nothing said in the show should be taken as investment advice. Employees and clients of Mach 1 Financial Group may maintain positions in the securities or strategies discussed. We upload a brand new podcast every Thursday, so be sure to subscribe to our show so you never miss an episode. Also, follow us on all of our social media platforms. We are Mach 1 Financial Group on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Today on the Mach 1 Market Moment, we're going to be talking about robo-advisors. Robo-advisors. If you don't know what that means, by the time of the end of this podcast, you'll know a whole lot more about it than you do now. This is episode 66, and today we've got... Matt Hager, our producer extraordinaire, here with us today. And also, of course, our wonderful, illustrious <laughs> CEO and founder, David Lee. All right, David, what do you know about robo advisors? Well, uh, robo advisors just basically, you know, kind of like the name implies, it's, uh, it's an, typically an online uh, investment service that w- with um, very minimal to no human interaction where you're you're getting advice essentially from a computer algorithm. Uh, that's essentially what it is. So you you plug in, for example, your risk tolerance, perhaps via a risk questionnaire, and it uh, spits out uh, a recommended investment model for you. It'll probably ask you some questions like, how old are you? How many kids do you have? How much money do you make? You know, some of these normal questions, how much do you spend if you're married, da 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 what, When do you plan to retire? In other words, what's your time horizon to retirement? All those types of things. How much you've got saved? Yep. Uh, what do you think your yep. Social Security is going to be? Some of these standard questions, and then based off of your risk profile, like you talked about, David, it'll say, okay, since you are a, let's use an example, a moderate, then based off of moderate, your age and income, we're going to put you in X, whatever these funds may be. Uh, so it, it, it uses algorithms based off of your answers to kind of plug you into some some investments. So, David, how long have these been around? Well, according to my research, they've been around since about 2008. Uh, it was started by a company called Betterment. Um, and um, so it, it, it came around essentially during the during the crash of, of, of 2008. Uh, with an entrepreneur named John Stein, who at the time was a 30-year-old entrepreneur and the, the founder of Betterment. That's, ah. where, that's where it all started. David's got a wealth of knowledge here, <laughs> folks. See, you, didn't, you thought we would just, just play this on the podcast. We know our stuff. Okay, so David, now we are financial advisors, and a robo-advisor would be a direct competition with us. Is that true? Well, uh, to an extent, uh, I would say... Uh, to a very minimal extent, because uh, typically, in my opinion, where robo advisors are most applicable is for what I call the do it yourself for anyway, people who are probably never going to use a financial advisor for one reason or another. Maybe they're just maybe they just don't really like human interaction. There's people out there like that, you know, people, some people just don't like to talk to other people. Uh, so a robo advisor uh, can be good for that. Or uh, another place where I think robo advisors are uh, really fit a niche is with people who are just getting started off. You know, a lot of advisors have, a lot of human advisors have certain account minimums. They won't work with you, if you unless you've got a half a million or a million or some really big number. Whereas robo advisors don't care if you've got a hundred bucks and you're putting a hundred bucks a month in or whatever. So they can really help people kind of get started uh, in, in, on the path of, of getting at least a minimal level of financial advice. So I, I think there's a place for robo-advisors in the marketplace. There absolutely is a place, and you might be surprised that we will be saying, yes, there is a place for robo-advisors. But like David said, someone just starting out, mainly a, a younger person that, you know, hey, realized I need to be planning for my future. I really don't have any assets to go see a financial advisor in person, but here's a way to get started. And so the benefits are that they have low fees. Uh, it's fairly simple. They don't get you anything, any, anything complicated. Um, and just read just the other day, David, only 29%, 29% of Americans have ever 
talk to any type of financial advisor. That's actually up from 17% through the pandemic that people have realized, you know what, I probably do need to get my financial house in order. So if that fits for you, if you're younger, then that, a robo-advisor may be advantageous for you. Okay. So, but David, what about, uh, why would somebody not want to use a robo-advisor? Well, I, to me, there's a, <laughs> this whole area of financial advising there, to me, there, it's a whole lot more, it's about a whole lot more than just money in my 15, 16 years of experience. Um, there's a lot of empathy that comes into this at times. You know, people, clients going through uh, health concerns, uh, loss, death in the family, um, just, you know, different life events that, that happen. And oftentimes I find myself, and Mike, I'm sure you can uh, relate to this in the time that you've been doing this, but I oftentimes find myself almost in the role of, of a counselor, right? And you, you obviously can't get that from a robo advisor. Robo advisor is not going to show any empathy. Uh, you're not going to, you know, share your, your concerns and how do we deal with, with this event that just happened in my life that might tangentially involve money, but also touches a, a, a breadth of other areas in their, in their real life. And you, you're obviously never going to get that from a robo advisor. And, and there's no way that a robo advisor, an algorithm, can stay constantly up to date and adjusting that to take into account all the multitude of variables that human interaction would be. Uh, we can see the same age couple have the same amount of children. Two two couples come in one right after the other. Their situations be diametrically opposite and have different goals, have things going on in their life, and a, a cookie cutter approach just does not work in that situation. Uh, but if you're young, like we said earlier, that, that may work if you're just starting out. But if you're in, you know, in your late 40s and 50s, you're looking at retirement, you've built some assets, being able to talk to a human, specifically a fiduciary, someone that's got your best interest at heart, makes sense because they can take into account all of your, your variables and then create a plan, and it's not a static plan either. Uh, here at Mach 1, we want to meet with you on a regular basis so if things change in your life. Like we recently had a couple of our clients had spouses pass away. That changes a lot of things. Uh, a robo-advisor may say, okay, now you go from married to single, then we do this. Well, that may not be the right thing. you got to know the whole story. That's right. So, and, you know, kind of to your point, we – uh you know, we use software to us, though, software robo advisor is nothing more than just software. That's what it is. It's software. It's online software. Typically, we use software as a tool. We use things like retirement analyzer and uh, various programs to to help us, you know, and help the client figure out what's the, the best path to the goal. But it's just a tool. It's not the end all be all. If we involve our human intuition, our um knowledge of of that particular client knowing who they are and what they need and what their history is and what their goals are and a uh, number of things to to modify uh, perhaps some of the things that we would even see in our software so i think you know again to the the question of what's the difference between a human advisor and a robo advisor humans have the capability of bringing a lot more synthesizing a lot more uh, let's call it intangible information then com computers just can't do that. Well, and, and one of the things we hear about robo-advisors is, you know what, it takes the emotion out of investing. Uh, that's probably true because there is no human on the other end. But does that keep the investor, the young investor that's invested with a robo-advisor, does that keep their emotions out of it? No. I, 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 well, I can't imagine that it would keep their emotions out of it. Just knowing what I know, having done this for 16 years, um, when – I just think back to, for example, the most recent time we really had a significant downturn in the market, March of 2020, when COVID was hitting, um, you know, we had, a, we had a lot of clients that were starting to get worried and calling and wondering, you know, what they should do. And one of the things that we were able to do during that time, this is a perfect example of something that a robo advisor could never do. We sent out, oh gosh, I was sending out a YouTube video about every day or at least every other day during that period of time, uh, sending that video to all of our hundreds of clients, reassuring them, explaining to them in detail, 
You see this put option right here. You see this strike price right here. You see where the market is right now. This is how you're going to be protected. So if this happens, this is what you can expect to happen. Or if this happens, this is what you can expect to happen. A robo-advisor can never and will never be able to do that. You can't look a robo-advisor in the eye and get a feeling of reassurance that that guy or that computer is telling me the truth, you know, uh, whereas you, you can get that from a human being. And so we, we, um, so anyway, I think that's, that's another, uh, clear way that we've been able to differentiate ourselves from robo robo advisors. And I, I don't think a, a robo advisor will never, in my opinion, be able to replace the human advisor completely. And, and to the point of taking the emotions out, the robo advisor has no emotions. And, and as far as, a financial advisor if you've got a plan like we implement here at Mach 1 then when things happen like last year we've already planned for that so there's no emotion to it we've got a plan we're sticking to it uh, so the emotion piece is really on the client and then the advisor is to make sure hey we do have a plan let's stick with the plan if you have a robo advisor that robo advisor is going to say okay you want to change it go ahead it dropped 30 percent maybe you should go to cash in hindsight now, that would have been the absolute worst thing to do. Right. Right. All right. So so emotion is one thing. All right. Um, anything else on robo-advisors, David, that you would say to our listeners that, you know, if you've got, if they have young children or I'd say young children, you know, starting out, just working in their 20s to 30s, would you recommend a robo-advisor for them? Yeah, kind of like we, we touched on this earlier. I think, again, I, I do think that robo-advisors have a place. I think if you're just starting off and you've got, you know, you're starting from zero and you're trying to build, but rather than just truly doing it on your own, if you want to think of it as a guideline, think of it as something to give you some sort of a, a, a guideline or rule to follow, a robo-advisor can be good for that. But once you start, you know, accumulating a larger amount of wealth and it starts to become more complex and you're starting to do college planning and things like that, uh, I think it, it's prudent for most people to kind of upgrade, so to speak, from robo-advisor to an actual human being. I, I would liken it to when you're first starting out, your, your tax situation is pretty simple to do. Yeah. You can use TurboTax turbo tax tax absolutely. Or something. Uh, then when you start accumulating assets and you've got properties and you've got you know, yeah. stocks, you yeah, know, I don't, I, I don't, TurboTax I, probably won't handle that. Yeah, I doubt that, uh, uh, I mean, you throw a name out there, Warren Buffett or somebody like that. <laughs> you, you know, he's not using TurboTax. Yeah. So yeah, it's, a, I think that's a great analogy. You know, there TurboTax fits a, a great need in the marketplace when it comes to doing taxes, L millions and millions of people. TurboTax is a great solution for them. It's much cheaper than hiring a CPA. And frankly, they don't need a CPA because they can get everything they need from Tur TurboTax. But TurboTax would not be a good solution for millions of other people who have much more complicated tax situations. And I think that's a perfect analogy. I'm glad you brought it up, Mike. I think that's a perfect analogy for the whole difference between robo-advisors and, and human advisors. So for robo-advisors, young, starting out, yes, great program. You start building assets, you really want to look at what your future looks like and plan it out, then you need to see an advisor because an advisor can advise they can say hey you know what you, a Roth IRA may be the best thing for you or maybe you need to do they can this. think outside the box too remember a computer program is only as smart as the human that programmed it the human gives it a bunch of if then I was a computer science major from the Air Force Academy I mean a computer program for the most part is a bunch of if then statements if they say this then you tell them to do that but the, who's the intelligence behind that the human that programmed it so Humans have the ability to think outside the box that computers w will never have. And just along that line, it's a commercial here for Mach 1. We have three advisors here, and we all have a little bit different viewpoint. We're at different ages in life, and so you get three different views on your particular situation. So that's another commercial for coming to see an advisor. We provide you advice based off the information we know. Again, three heads are better than one. Uh, and, and again, you can sit down and look us in the face and we can get a feel for who you are. Okay, any parting thoughts on robo-advisors versus in-person advising? 
All right, David, well, thank you for that insight on robo-advisors versus in-person financial advisors. And folks, as you, you've been watching the market here recently, we're recording this here on uh, Tuesday. Uh, the market has been hitting all-time highs here recently. So some of you say, well, that's great. I want to get in. Or some of you say, hey, maybe it's time to get out. Or maybe I need to go talk to somebody. That's probably the best thing to do. So, But we are hitting all-time highs. The market's doing great. Uh, but we never know what tomorrow's going to bring. And if you want to learn more about Mach 1, we have several upcoming events. You can give us a call here at the Mach 1 uh, office at 479-876-2100. And we can let you know all about our upcoming in-person events. We, if you want to go online and learn more about money school, questions you have about money, just didn't know where to ask, we have a series of 11 YouTube videos that you can watch there. And, of course, you're listening to the podcast, another position here. All right, so we like to end each podcast with a thought of the day. Uh, this was by Albert Hubbard. He's an American writer, and he said, one machine can do the work of 50 ordinary men. No machine can do the work of one extraordinary man. And we could substitute women in there, too, so <laughs> we're not being sexist here. One machine can do the work of 50 ordinary men, but no machine can do the work of one extraordinary man. Thank you, folks, for listening to the Mach 1 Market Moment. We look forward to you joining us next time. Take care. Mach 1 Financial Group, Inc. Mach 1 is an SEC-registered investment advisor located in Bentonville, Arkansas. Mach 1 may only transact business in those states in which it maintains a notice filing or qualifies for an exemption or exclusion from registration requirements. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular skill level or ability. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The information presented is the sole opinion of the speaker and is not meant to be investment advice. Mach 1 does not provide tax or legal advice. You should speak with your tax or legal advisor regarding your specific situation. For full disclosures, please visit www.mock-1financial.com disclosures.